Everyone, when it's time to deploy your Next.js app, you basically have two options. So Next.js is actually just a Node.js app. So everywhere where you can host Node.js apps is also where you should be able to host a Next.js app. Now, typically people tend to go for a platform as a service like Vercel. Vercel is very popular because it offers a really nice developer experience. It has a lot of things out of the box. Now, the downside is it does come with a price tag, especially as you start to scale. So one other option you have is to deploy on a VPN. And that's what we're going to look at in this video because high velocity just released their vps offering and according to them at least it's the most affordable vps right now on the market for the performance that you get so they need to get the word out and that's why they're sponsoring this video and it's not only about price sometimes you really need advanced customizations so that may also be a reason for using a vps right so in this video we're going to look at how to deploy a next.js app to a vps the vps will come from high velocity so let's actually take a look at what they're offering here so here they show you the plans they have so the cheapest one is actually four dollars a month which is very affordable and you get 10 terabytes of bandwidth i have not seen that with any other vps offering high velocity was generous enough to give me the most powerful vps for this tutorial but everything we do here should also work on the cheapest plan so after you bought one of those vps's you can then manage that here in their dashboard so here i'm in their dashboard I have an overview of all the devices here and this is the VPS that I was given. It's a VPS that's currently located in Los Angeles. It has a public IP address, which is actually what we will use later in the browser to actually see our Next.js app. All right, so I can click on this for more information. And most importantly, though, we need the IP address because we're going to need that when we actually go to our website, but also to SSH to connect to our VPS and set things up. So let's say we have a Next.js app and I actually created an example app here. Very simple right now. It just has this homepage here and this homepage is currently saying hello, everyone. Just to make it a little bit more interesting, let's also add a separate route here. Let's just make that the about route. So in the new Next.js app router you need to create a folder and then it's a page.tsx file so you need to export a component here i will just call that page although you could call it something else about page here all right let me delete this and let me save here all right so now we have a home page and a slash about page and locally here on my own computer I can start a development process if we look at the package.json here. We actually have a couple of scripts. So here for development, I can run this script. So if I open up my terminal here in Visual Studio Code, I can run npm run dev. And this will actually just spin up a Node.js process, right? So this is all Node.js under the hood. And by default here, the Next.js app will be available on the port 3000. So if I open that up, I can see hello everyone. And if I go to slash about, press enter here i am now on the about page so that's working as well but this is during development right so now when we go to production what we want to do is create an optimized build so what we want to run is this script this will optimize everything all of our files it will really make it as performant as possible and then we want to run that optimized version and we can do that with this script so this next start script so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we can get all of these files on our VPS. We're going to run that build on our VPS. Once it's built, we're going to start that optimized bundle on the VPS. So how do we get all of those files on the VPS in the first place? Well, the easiest way I found is to actually just use Git and GitHub for this. So we will make a repository for our project. So let's quickly go to GitHub here. I already logged in. I'm going to create a new repository. I'm going to close this tab here and I will just call that example vps tutorial example vps tutorial and i'm gonna make it public i think if you make it private it's gonna be a little bit more difficult because we're going to clone this repository onto the vps so if it's not publicly available you need to create an additional access token uh, so i think public should be a little bit easier we'll see so i'm gonna create this repository here all right so this repository is currently empty so i'm just gonna copy all of these uh, commands here i'm gonna copy them let's see open up my terminal here again and i can close this development process here we're not going to use that anymore and then i'm going to paste all of those commands you can do that actually you can just copy all of that and just paste all of that and just press enter we'll do all of them in one go all right so if you run those commands you should be able to push all of those files to this github repo and now it's stored on GitHub. So now we can log into our VPS and from the VPS server, we can clone this repo, right? So here I have opened up a terminal 
Now I'm on MacBook and by default this is the Z shell, but you may be on Windows. Now don't worry about that because the commands will stay the same, right? So you may be using PowerShell or the command prompt TMD, it will all work the same way. Now I tried doing this in Visual Studio Code, right? So in Visual Studio Code, we also have this terminal. It's an integrated terminal, but I, for some reason, run into issues when I use this one. So I opened up this separate terminal window, but it's the exact same as in Visual Studio Code. All right, so currently, I haven't done anything here. We need to log into our VPS here. So we use something called SSH for that. So we can say SSH, then it's the root, at, and then we need to use this IP address. So I'm gonna click here and paste it right here, and I'm gonna press enter. And now, of course, we need to uh, give credentials, right? Not everybody can just log into that VPS. So I need to give a password here. When you buy a VPS, the first week, you're gonna have login credentials and then it will be removed. So once you buy the VPS, make sure you store it somewhere safe. I don't see them anymore because I was given this VPS more than a week ago. So I'm going to type my passwords here that I got. It's not shown here in the terminal window, but I am actually typing the password. Now, if I press enter, it should work. So now you can see I'm logged into my VPS, right? So it will show some information. It's running Ubuntu and it's gonna show some other information, but not, nothing that interesting here because we haven't done anything yet. Okay, now you can also see that this is different from what I had before. So really indicating that the commands that we're gonna run now are gonna be the commands executed on that server, right? not on my own computer. So one command I can run here is the present working directory. So you can see we're currently in the slash root directory. And to clone this, we're gonna need a git, right? So we can check if git is installed. We can say which git. And it actually shows us a path to the binary, meaning git is actually already pre-installed when you buy a VPS from high velocity. So that's really nice. Now, before we're going to do this git clone, we also know that we're gonna need Node.js because at the end of the day, this is all just a Node.js process. So we need to make sure that we also have Node.js installed. And I just did a clear, by the way. So I did clear and it will remove all the old commands so we have a nice clean view. So now we need to install Node.js. Now, if you try doing something like Node-V, it will give you an error. It will say Node cannot be found. And it will actually give you a suggestion on how to install Node.js. Right, so don't run this, but you can actually do something like apt uh, install Node.js and it will install Node.js for you, but it's gonna be an older version I found. So a better way of doing this is with NVM. This is the Node version manager and that also allows you to easily switch between Node.js versions in case you wanna do that. And we're gonna use NVM. So we need to install NVM and you can install NVM with a, with a command. You can find that command here in this GitHub repo. Seems like a lot of work to hunt down one command, but if you Google for NVM, you should be able to find this uh, repo very easily a lot of people have to go here so here you'll find install and update script but we just want install so i'm just gonna copy this and i'm just gonna paste that here in my terminal i'm just gonna install nvm like this all right so after that's finished you want to make sure that you read this line very closely it says close and reopen your terminal to start using nvm or run the following to use it now so it needs to add nvm to the path variable on the operating system and we can do that with these commands actually so you can actually just copy this and just paste that here. Looks a bit clunky, but if I now press enter, it should work. All right, so now that should work. So if I do something like nvm-v, I actually do see a version number. So nvm seems to be successfully installed here. And now we can use this node version manager to install Node.js itself. So what we can say is nvm install, and we just want the latest uh, version that has long-term support. So we can say dash dash LTS, it's gonna install Node.js and you can see it's gonna be version 20.9. All right, so now once that is finished, I can try typing node dash V and I actually get a Node.js version here of 20.9. Now, as part of that Node.js install, we should also have the NPM package manager for Node.js. So if we do NPM dash V, we also should see a version number here. All right, so now we have everything that we need. So now let's actually try git cloning this so we're going to use this uh, https url and i'm going to say git clone and i'm just going to paste an address i'm going to press enter and let's see if that works all right so that seems to have gone successfully now how do we check that if i write ls here we will actually see a couple of things here so you're going to see something like snap that's just 
by default uh, something that we're gonna have here. Now here, I actually prepared this tutorial. So from a previous try, I have example dash VPS here as well. But now we also have example VPS tutorial. So this is the directory that will hold all of these files here. And I can, I can actually check that. I can change the directory to go in there. I actually only have to write example VPS dash and then press tab and it will actually suggest the complete name for me. So if I change the directory into there and now do LS again, you can see that we get a bunch of files here packed to JSON. All the files here are now also available on the VPS, right? So there is some server in the world. If mine here is currently located in Los Angeles, which now holds all of those files, right? So what we talked about before to now make this actually work, we could actually run a npm run dev on this VPS. And that will actually spin up a Node.js process and it will make it available on port 3000 on that IP, but that's not optimal, right? So development mode is not optimal. We, we wanna create an optimized version now. So we wanna create a build. And to do that properly, it will need all of these dependencies. So both here in the production dependencies as well as the dev dependencies, because for example, Tailwind needs to go over all the files and it needs to see which class names you use so it can generate an optimized uh, style sheet. So the dev dependencies are also gonna need to be installed here. So here, what we wanna run here is say npm install, which will install all of those dependencies. And this is not a problem because our app here is fairly small. It depends a bit on the size of your VPS uh, on whether you wanna do it a different way. All right, so that uh, looks good. So now the dependencies should be installed. So now we can run npm run build, which is gonna create an optimized version. All on the VPS, you can see it's uh, starting to do that, it can take a couple of seconds. All right, so at some point that should be finished and you will see a view like this, right? It will say something about the route that your app will have in production. So we have the homepage and the about, and by default, it will also create this not found route. It will show you the JavaScript that you're gonna download when you go to those routes, and also the JavaScript that's gonna be shared by all of those routes. That's now all available on the VPS, on High Velocity's VPS. So now we wanna run this on that VPS and we can say npm run start and it will run, it will spin up a Node.js process and it will run that optimized app. So you can see now here it says it's available on localhost 3000. So localhost, previously that was our own computer, but this is now the high velocity VPS, right? So now it's saying on this VPS on port 3000, this app is running. So we should now be able to use this IP, go here, use this IP, and then remember it's port 3000. Now if I press enter, we should see our app. And indeed we do. We now see that our Next.js app, app, Next app is running live on the internet on a VPS and publicly available with this IP address, with this port. And let's actually also try to see if we can see that slash about route if routing is also working and indeed routing here is working as well, right? So pretty cool that this is working now. Now, of course, we can make this much more sophisticated now. We, we can add SSL, right? So now we have HTTP. We want to make it HTTPS. We want to maybe configure uh, DNS because we, we don't want to have people have to type in, you know, the sequence of numbers to get to our website. We want to give them a nice clean name, something like domain.com, right? And also, of course, not have the port number. So this should be domain.com. Right, so we can set up DNS for that, purchase a domain somewhere. We can also use something like uh, PM2 to manage this Node.js process. Right, we could have also dockerized this. You can make this as sophisticated as you want. That's the beauty of using a VPS. You get much more control than by using a platform as service. And thanks to High Velocity, that is actually very affordable. Right, so check out their website. It's highvelocity.net. They're running a celebration launch with very affordable prices here. And you saw how simple it was to set everything up. I have to say dashboard, everything here looks very clean. It was very easy to prepare. Everything just worked. So it is indeed simple to do. It's very affordable. Again, $4 for the cheapest plan. You get these server resources, right? So there is also something called shared hosting. So with shared hosting, you're sharing a server with other websites as well. So if another website gets a lot of traffic, your website can be hurt by that. Right? Now with VPS, that's a little bit different. So with VPS, it's more isolated. So those resources are actually yours. Somebody else's 
Tesla's user does not impact you. So they have global availability. They have a good support team. As I found out myself, as I was preparing, I made some silly mistakes and I just asked them a bunch of questions. And literally within a couple of seconds, I got somebody to chat with me and they really helped me out really well. So I can really vouch with this, that their support, at least to me, seems really good. They have a fast network here. So you have a low latency, right? Which means that if somebody goes to your app, how long does it take to get a response? Well, they have a very fast network. Right, so here you can compare their new VPS offerings. One helpful thing perhaps here is it has DDoS protection out of the box, right? So you don't have to set it up yourself. That's, I think that's really beneficial. And I just noticed that my light went off, so hopefully you can still see me. And you can also decide yourself which operating systems you want. By default, it's Ubuntu. They actually have a very useful uh, frequently asked questions. Usually I don't really find them really interesting, but they actually put some effort in, into this and their answers are really good, very clear. And it also helps you understand how all of this works with VPS hosting, right? So this may be something that you want to consider using as an alternative to a platform as a service. I want to thank High Velocity for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching this video. Have a nice day and bye.